Hey everybody, it's Scott. I'm back again. And again, sorry for the jumbling camera. If you have motion sickness, don't watch this video. It may have adverse effects on you. Um, I had a couple of questions about what exactly... Um, what exactly, like, using paints other than acrylics on a model. Um, and so one of the things that often gets brought up is using an oil wash. And uh, I use oil washes a lot. That's why you can see like a lot of light reflecting off of uh, old Rowdy here. Because the oil wash on him is... Because he, he's, he has an oil wash. And in order to do an oil wash, there's a couple steps you really should do to the model beforehand. And then I'm going to kind of point it out. Now keep in mind, this guy's a works in progress. Um, so he doesn't look that good yet, hopefully. Hopefully I'll make him look good. We'll see. Um, but basically what I've done is I've prepared the model for a wash, um, and then I washed them with some different oil colors. Um, and those different oil colors really kind of help the, the detail and the definition show up on the model. So what I'm going to kind of do is I'm, I'm going to show you why I use an oil wash and what some of the steps are. So the first thing is, is an oil wash is extremely precise. Um... And I, I actually like and prefer oil, although I know there are some people who use uh, watercolor washes, and they're, they're fine too. Um, but oil washes tend to really, if I back that up, he actually looks a little better. There we go. Now he doesn't look quite so terrible. Um, but anyways, a lot of people actually use oil washes. Um, a lot of people use watercolor washes. Watercolor washes are fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. I know a lot of people use them. Um, they can be worked with. They can be thinned down. They do a lot of really cool things on the model. Um, oil washes tend to do... I, I like oil washes because they tend to immediately gravitate towards um, whatever it is that you're washing. I mean, they just they suck right up and they soak right in. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. On, I'm taking a switch from circle here for a little bit. I'm going to paint some some, some uh, Signar. So here's a hunter. And he's kind of half primed, half not. I had a little trouble with my uh, had a little trouble with my Patriot 105, kind of getting some back bleeds. So uh, we'll be sanding him down and repriming him or maybe even a complete strip. So I don't mind kind of trashing the model to show you guys this. So the first thing is, is using paints other than acrylics. So a couple of things that you need to know is that watercolors are good. Um, and I know a lot of people who use them. Uh, some people really, really, really like oil washes. I'm in that crowd. Um, but to use an oil wash, you have to find something to thin down the oil wash with. And typically, I use this stuff right here, which is an odorless mineral spirits. Um, it's about eight bucks for a fairly decent sized jug. My jug ought to last quite a while. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to kind of notice with odorless mineral spirits is, um, it is a poison. Now, it's, I don't think it's going to kill anybody if you drink it, but if you have kids and stuff, I, I keep it away from their reach. The other thing you should probably know about oil washes is that you have to thin down the paint with mineral spirits. Mineral spirits will eat acrylic paint like it's nobody's business. Um, you put acrylic, you put an oil wash on acrylic paints, and the acrylic paint will literally just go away. Like it's bad. Um, you will brush it on, and you will see the acrylic paint come off. So what you have to do, and the reason why old, old Rowdy over there is so insanely glossy, is because you need to coat the model with something that will actually protect the paint you've got on it. So what I do is I typically take a pretty liberal um, gloss varnish. And the reason why I use a gloss varnish is so I can, the reason why I use a gloss varnish is really so I can get in and I can coat it really well. And that gloss, var that gloss varnish is very smooth. So it really kind of gives you this nice, wonderful, uh, slick surface for the wash to kind of move around on. Um, and that's, that's really what, that's really why I like it so much. Cause it will just, it just immediately just dives right into all those greaves and cracks. I'm going to show you that here in a second. 
The next thing I want to make sure that you guys know is when you're actually using an oil wash, it's very important that you don't use your really fine, good, nice, um, you know, sable fox hair brushes. Um, you don't want to use those. What you want to use are a Taclon brush. You want to use a synthetic brush because mineral spirits will strip the hair. And so it's a natural, it's a natural fiber, right? Hair is a natural fiber. So what does your hair do when it gets stripped of like all the nutrients and the coating and the conditioner, right? What does your hair do? Your hair does what everybody else's hair does. Uh, it cracks, breaks, split ends, falls apart. Well, the same thing's going to happen to your brush. So you really don't want to use a mineral spirit thinned oil wash on your brush. Now the next thing I'm going to show you, you want to use a synthetic. So the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to kind of just mix this up. And you'll notice that there's, this is pretty thin stuff. This is water consistency. And you'll have to forgive my horrible palette here, but you know an oil wash is ready when you touch it and it just immediately jumps off. Right? Like it's just immediately jumping off. That's when you know it's thinned down to the consistency that's probably going to work well. And I'm going to show you why I like oil washes right now. So I'm just going to turn him on the side. And then I'm doing this through a camera, so it's a little more difficult. So let me get that in frame. So I'm just going to touch the oil wash there. I'm going to touch it there. And the oil wash literally is just going to move exactly where I tell it to. It's just going to automatically fill in a lot of those cracks and greaves. And you can just see it kind of tracing the lines all over the place. So I'm just going to kind of move it around a little bit. I'm going to pick up a little more here. And this is actually kind of a thick oil wash too. This actually should probably be thinned down just a little more. So I'm just going to come in here. And I'm literally just going to touch it on the areas I want to go. And you can just see, sorry, I kind of got that out of frame just a little bit. But um, you can just see how literally um, it's just bleeding. Like it's just going to all those cracks and grooves. You can see it there. We can kind of help it along a little bit. Um, and you can see that. And if I wasn't doing this one handed, like I'd have a little bit more control so it would look a little bit more consistent. And the coolest thing is, is like say you had an area up here that you just kind of wanted to cover. And then you were like, man, that's that's just way too much wash. Like I didn't, I didn't need to get that much on there. That, that's nuts. So here we go. Let's get some wash up here. Oh my goodness. No, I made all these horrible mistakes. I'm terrible. Like, oh my goodness, the model's ruined. Well, no, not really. And I'll show you why. Um, one of the cool things about oil washes, by the way, when you have an oil wash, you need to clean your brush and mineral spirits. You, you don't want to try and clean it water. Water's not going to clean your brush. Um, so one of the things that you can do, and this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love oil washes, and you can do this for a, quite a good long while after it's clean. If you want to go back and you want to take that wash off the model, you can. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of mineral spirits. And you can do this whether that wash is dry or whether it's wet. And so literally all I'm going to do is just take some mineral spirits on it. And I'm just going to take my Q-tip and I'm just going to pick it up. And I'm just going to leave that wash in those greaves. And uh, keep in mind, too, you can, you know, the cleaner the Q-tip is, obviously, the more likely it is to actually pick it up and, and do all the cleaning. Um, and then if you get an area like that where you've got, you know, just lots of lots of wash and you didn't want to get it there and it's not the effect you want, just get a little bit of mineral spirits on and just drag that over. Now, some people use Q-tips. I actually use cosmetic sponges. So my wife has a ton of these things. She doesn't care if I use a couple of them. So, whoops, see, I had a little bit of wash on that. What I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to dip it. So I'm just going to dip it, and then I'm just going to kind of squeeze that out. I'm trying to show you guys as best I can, but I'm recording on an iPad. So, But essentially, I'm just going to take that and just kind of go over the model and I'm just going to pick up all that extra wash that I don't want 
And again, doing this through a doing this through a camera is really kind of tough. So, and the thing about it is, is like you can once you get it wetted down, you can kind of take another area of the sponge and just kind of pick it up, and you'll leave just these real tiny little gradients left. Um, and that's why I like oil washes. So, in practical application, what does that look like? Well, when you have a painted model, or at least a model you're getting close to painting, like we're out of here. So, see back here, at the top by his crest, it's actually kind of dingy and dirty, um, particularly right in there, right? So, if I wanted to clean that up, I'm going to try to do this. I've got to be very careful because I actually have other paint on the model and it's been sealed. And, but if I wanted to clean that up, I literally, I'm just going to drag that q-tip back there and you can see that if I keep going I'm going to continue to pick up that that oil wash and so what happens is, is it leaves those really nice dark lines behind um, and it creates these wonderful little pencil lines that that really kind of help drive in some of those details um, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't over the it doesn't overpower the model, and that's really what I like the most about it. So, anyways, uh, a lot of you guys had some questions. Like I actually got some emails at 27 subscribers. Uh, that's insane. Didn't even know that would happen. So, um, keep in mind, and I can't stress this enough, guys. I'm not a golden demon quality painter. I'm not an award winning painter. Um, I'm just a guy who's really enthusiastic about the hobby. I like to try new painting styles. I like to try new things. Um, so, you know, it, what I say may or may not have relevance, and I don't want you guys to, um, hold it as gospel, and if you're, like, a pro painter or someone who's amazing and, and, um, there's a different layer to the technique that you want to share, like, please, by all means, share, and, uh, you know, let's discuss it on a future video, because, um, you know, people like Aaron from Schnauzer Face Minis and... Less from APJ. I mean, these guys. These guys are the pros. Like these are the guys that I learn techniques from, um, and I try to try to incorporate them as best I can. Uh, and then sometimes I'm really successful at it, and sometimes I'm not. So, uh, anyways, uh, keep painting and keep sending me video or keep sending me questions, guys. I, I really love answering them uh, where I can, just from one hobbyist to another. And um, I actually had a, a request for a video just to kind of walk some people through what my horrible horrible mess of a painting station looks like and what I normally use so I'll probably put that video up here before too long too so have a good night